last week on Faith in Focus. God wanted to let them and us know that there is no group, uh, no category of people who because of their background, their behavior, and their beliefs uh, who are written off by God. Somebody ought to shout right there. Uh, God wanted to let them know that it does not matter what you or I think about them, God cares for everybody. It does not matter what others say about them. Them, God includes them. It does not matter how people selectively appropriate scripture for their own prejudicial purposes. God welcomes everybody. Welcome to Faith in Focus. I'm Tyra Mariani. You know, in Acts chapter 10, the Gentiles were considered the marginalized of society. The Jews considered them unclean and therefore left them on the outskirts of society. They were not allowed to worship God with the believers and were left out of the family of faith. From all outside appearances, God had counted them out. However, when God gives Peter a vision and a new revelation, he discovers that the ones who they previously excluded are the ones who are now included in the household of faith. Let's tune in now to part two of today's message, which is already in progress. Don't count me out. Somebody in the house today knows what it's like to have people in the church exclude you because of your background. You know what it's like to have people count you out because of your past. But the Lord sent me on divine assignment to tell somebody that regardless of your background and regardless of your biology and regardless of people's selective interpretation of the Bible, that God loves you and God cares for you and God includes you in the family of God. You might as well slap high five with your neighbor and say, neighbor, uh, don't count me out. I may have been divorced, but don't count me out. I haven't dotted every I and crossed every T, but don't count me out. Is there anybody here today who can testify that that after all of the hell that you've been through, that God is not through with you. Come on, I want you to push your neighbor. And I want you to say, neighbor, you have come too far for you to give up now. I don't care what they say about you. I don't care what they think about you. You are still beloved by God. I want you to picture this. I want you to picture this, that while Peter is preaching, the Jewish contingent is sharpening their knives to circumcise the Gentiles. He's in the pulpit preaching. And while he's in his second point, uh, the, the, the circumcised believers are in the back. They are sharpening their knives. Uh, because in their mind, uh, these people cannot be saved. They cannot receive the Holy Spirit until they change their nature first. I need y'all to get this. They're in the back of the church. They're sharpening their knives. Uh, and they got some Bible verses uh, because in their minds, uh, they can't get the ghost. The Spirit can't fall on them. Uh, and they can't be included uh, in the congregation uh, until they change their nature first uh, but God has to interrupt the situation 
situation and God falls upon them without them being circumcised. I stop by to tell somebody that every now and then you got to realize that you got to catch the fish first before you can clean the fish. Have I got a witness here? Uh, look at your neighbor. Say, neighbor, uh, don't you count me out. Uh, have I got a witness here? Yes, I've done some dirt. Uh, Lord, I ain't talking about a long time ago. I've done some things. I've said some things. But I thank God uh, that God has not given up on me. Is there anybody in the building today? Everybody gave up on you. Your friends gave up on you. Said you had too many babies. You got too many baby daddies. I have I got a witness here. And you shouldn't be a deaconess. You shouldn't be a leader in the church because you had a child out of wedlock. The devil is a liar. Have I got a witness here? In the Bible that I read, God uses imperfect people. Have I got a witness here? I do not want to pastor a perfect church. If you're looking for a perfect church, you go ahead and leave. I'm looking for a church of imperfect people. I'm looking for a church of folk who realize that they need a doctor, that they need a healer, that they need a deliverer. Come on, tell your neighbor, don't count me out. The government might count me out, but you don't count me out. Look at your other neighbor. Say, neighbor, the church might count you out because you're from the wrong background. You're from the wrong neighborhood. You're from Berry Farms. Uh, but the devil, uh, the devil is a liar. God can use anybody. And if he can use Jesus from Nazareth, he can use somebody from the project. Have I got a witness up in here? Is there anybody here today? Day, who can testify that I'm still here because I understand that God hasn't counted me out. The interesting thing to me about this text, the interesting thing to me about this text is who gets the revelation. I'm shocked that the revelation that God can touch and change anybody regardless of the circumstances of their birth and regardless of their background and regardless of what people claim about the Bible came to Peter. You remember Peter, don't you? Uh, think about Peter's place and position in the Christian community. Peter delivered the first Christian sermon in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. Peter uh, healed a lame man at the gate called Beautiful. Uh, there was a demon possessed man who was healed simply by standing in Peter's shadow. Uh, Peter healed Aeneas in the city of Lydda and Peter raised Dorcas from the dead. I believe in chapter 9 in the city of Joppa. And as far as the Christian community is concerned, Peter has seniority, church. Uh, Peter has a title. He's got a position. He, Peter got a seat down front. Uh, uh, but what this suggests to me is that even though uh, Peter has seniority, there were some things that Peter still had to learn. Peter's got a position, but Peter is still wrong nonetheless. That suggests that your tenure in the church does not mean that you know everything that there is to know about God. Have I got a witness here? You can have seniority. Uh, you can have been in the church all of your life. You can have been in Sunday school, know the Bible forwards and backwards, and still have some things to learn. I know that because I am sick and tired. Did I say sick and tired? I am sick and tired of Christians believing that they know everything that there is to know about God. I want you to think about 
about this. God is omniscient. That means he knows everything. God is omnipotent. That means he's got all power. God is omnipresent. That means he's everywhere. How can you understand an omniscient, an omnipotent, and an omnipresent God with your fallible mind? Have I got a witness here? And I'm sick and tired of Christians looking at other people and making conclusions about their destiny and their future. I stop by to tell somebody that people may say you can't, but God says you can. People may say it's over, but God says you're just getting started. People may say that you can't preach, you should not sing, that you shouldn't be a leader, but God says that you're still his child. Is there anybody in the building who's had other people count you out, but you can find God that he counts you in? Have I got a witness here? Still to come on Faith in Focus. I stop by to tell somebody, don't you get so smart that you start reasoning with God that it causes you to miss your blessing. Have I got a witness here? You got to get to a point where you are open to receiving the voice of God. Join us, get involved, and help us stay connected with you. You can follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. And you can view our services live every Sunday morning at 7.30, 9.30, and 11.30 Eastern Time at mountenan.org. Have I got a witness here? And he started shouting because the folk in church, they saw something, they said something, but then they did something. Have I got a witness here? Come grow with us at Mount Enon Baptist Church for people on the grow. The Gentiles in Acts were not familiar with the customs or religious practices of the Jews in their time. However, God, through Peter's vision, let them know that they were accepted into the household of faith. There are many of us today who may not be familiar with all of the things that we practice in church. You may not know all of the songs we sing. You may not be able to recite all of the tenets of our faith. But God is saying to you today, you are my son. You are my daughter. Don't count yourself out because God hasn't counted you out. Let's finish up today's message. Don't count me out. I want you to understand that in order to be open to God, you got to receive what God says whenever God speaks. When God spoke to Peter in chapter 10, the first thing that Peter does is he tries to reason with God. Uh, God told him, uh, God said, uh, uh, rise, uh, Peter, and eat. And when you read the text, it says uh, that when God is speaking to Peter, that Peter starts trying to rationalize and tries to reason with God. He says, God, you know, uh, there's nothing unclean that has ever touched these lips. Lord have mercy. Uh, Peter says to God, I hear what you're saying, but I need to reason and to rationalize with you uh, based upon my understanding of what is possible. And I stop by to tell somebody that when God speaks to your child of God, uh, don't you get to the point where you're trying to rationalize and you're trying to reason with God. God is speaking to somebody. God says, I want you to start your own business. Uh, for somebody, God says, it's time for you to step out on faith and for you to do this on your own. Have I got a witness here? 
but you started reasoning with God. You said, God, I got this car note, and God, I got this house note, and God, I got this Macy's card, and God, I got my kids in the private school, and God says back, look here, I don't, I don't need to know about your bills. Have I got a witness here? As a matter of fact, I didn't tell you to get that car anyway. All you needed was transportation. Who told you to go out there and get an S550 when you got a Toyota budget? Y'all got quiet. Whenever God speaks to you, don't ever start rationalizing and reasoning with God. Because whenever you start reasoning with God, it'll cause you to reject God. The Bible says that three times God had to speak to Peter. And the Bible says that at the end of the day, that after reasoning with God, that Peter rejected God. That he walked away without the answer that he needed. That was interesting to me. Because when you read the story, the story says that before the vision, that Peter was hungry and he wanted something to eat. I have I got a witness here. In other words, he had a need and God supplied the need. And God said, here, I want you to rise up and eat because you're hungry and you need something to eat. But because you keep reasoning and rationalizing with God, you're going to miss a blessing. I stop by to tell somebody, don't you get so smart that you start reasoning with God that it causes you to miss your blessing. Have I got a witness here? You got to get to a point where you are open to receiving the voice of God. Have I got a witness here? And the only way Peter received the message from God is that first of all, he realized that what he had been taught was wrong. I don't have enough time here. But when Peter enters Cornelius's house, he says in chapter 10, 28, he says, you yourselves know that it is unlawful for a Jew to associate with or to visit a Gentile. In other words, what he's saying is, I've been to Sunday school and they told me in Sunday school that I should not be in your house. But then Peter says, but I'm realizing now that what I should not call the unclean, what God declares is clean. I'm going to get out of your way. Y'all don't want this. I stop by to tell somebody that you can be taught something and what you've been taught can be absolutely wrong. That's why a lot of people in the church are in so much bondage. Y'all not in the building. I don't have time to chronicle the list of inaccuracies that we've been taught. How many people have I bumped into who've had a preacher tell them that if you've been divorced that you, and you've been remarried that you're living in sin and your life is against the word of God. And I understand what Matthew 5 verse 31 and 32 says but what you got to understand that while it says divorce in English it is not talking about divorce today. Oh I didn't mean to bust your bubble. I stopped by to tell somebody that if your marriage didn't work I mean go ahead and pray and, and I, I pray to God I ask God to heal you to heal the other person but you don't have to walk around in bondage because somebody told you and selected a Bible verse out of context I see y'all didn't like that how many of us have been told that women should not preach uh, yes you've been in churches where the preacher told you that a woman shouldn't preach and they told you that when a woman comes in church that she ought to have a doily on her head or that her hair should be long the devil is a liar first of all that passage in 1st Corinthians chapter 11 is being taken out of context and then second of all 
the first preachers in the Bible were women. You do remember that when Jesus got up, it was some sisters who proclaimed to the brothers that Jesus is alive. Come on, slap high five with your neighbor and say, neighbor, what you've been taught, it might be wrong. I see y'all don't want to hear this. Peter realized that what he was taught was wrong. But then lastly, he received the message because he remembered that his own people were at one time ostracized themselves. I need you to read chapter 10 and chapter 11 yourself. And Peter realized that I can't look down on Cornelius because when I think about my own people, there was a time when my own people, my own folk were oppressed in the land of Egypt. And who am I now, now that I'm on the inside, to look down on somebody else? I stopped by to tell somebody, don't you look down on somebody else. I don't care what you think about where they're from. And I don't care what you think about what they do. There was a time when your people were looked down upon. There was a time when your behind was locked out of the church. But look at you now. You used to have to sit in the balcony. But now you got a choice. Because God let you in. I'm going to get out of your way. But I stopped by to tell somebody. Don't you count me out. Because God is not through with me yet. May the Lord bless you real good. But I stopped by to tell somebody that you have come too far for you to give up now. Come on, slap high five with three people and say, neighbor, don't count me out. I was on drugs, but don't count me out. Had a child out of wedlock, but don't count me out. My marriage didn't work, but don't count me out because God is not through with me yet. Somebody missed your shouting point because after everything that you've been through, you should have thrown up your hand. You should have thrown in the towel. But the good news is that you're still here. And because you're still here, you ought to give God praise. Because you're still here, you ought to give God glory. Won't God do it? Won't he make a way out of no way? Won't he be a bridge over troubled water? I want you to put your hands together and give God some praise. Hallelujah. You have come too far for you to give up now. Unfortunately, we're out of time for today. We hope that you've enjoyed part two of Don't Count Me Out. We pray that you've been encouraged knowing that despite where you may come from and what you've done, God has not counted you out. He still has a plan for your life. If you're ever in the Washington, D.C. area, please stop by and see us. We have a great pastor in the Reverend Delman L. Coates and would love to see you. Please visit us at www.mountenan.org for more information on our upcoming events and for the times of our services. Please contact us if you're ever in need of special prayer or need a word of encouragement. We'd love to hear from you. I know that this message will be a blessing to you, a family member, a coworker, or a friend. Please stay tuned and our announcer will tell you how you can add this message to your library. Don't turn the channel or turn off your television set because we'll be back with a final word of prayer. Receive the latest message by Pastor Delman Coates. I may have been divorced, but don't count me out. I haven't dotted every I and crossed every T, but don't count me out. Is there anybody here today who can testify that after all of the hell that you've been through, that God is not through with you?
Come on, I want you to push your neighbor. And I want you to say, neighbor, you have come too far for you to give up now. I don't care what they say about you. I don't care what they think about you. You are still beloved by God. Order your copy of today's message by writing to us, visiting our website, or call us at 301-238-4982 and get yours today. Join us, get involved, and help us stay connected with you. You can follow us on Twitter. Like us on Facebook. And you can view our services live every Sunday morning at 7.30, 9.30, and 11.30 Eastern Time at mountenan.org. I got a witness here and he started shouting because the folk in church they saw something they said something but then they did something have I got a witness here come grow with us at Mount Enon Baptist Church for people on the grow join the Mount Enon Baptist Church family for any of these dynamic events July 8th and 9th Join us for Vacation Bible School. Join us as we study the Word and celebrate God's faithfulness, featuring our music and arts ministry. There will be classes for adults and children. Volunteers are needed. Please sign up to attend and to volunteer at the Member Services Station. Wednesday, July 10th, join us for the Halftime One Night Summer Revival with Pastor Terrence H. Johnson from the Higher Dimension Church in Houston, Texas. We will also have special musical guests so come out and bring a friend. Friday, July 26th, join us for the Mount Enon Baptist Church Annual Scholarship Golf Tournament at Andrews Air Force Base Golf Course. The tournament begins at 8 a.m. Participants will be eligible to win cash and other prizes to include the use of a BMW for the weekend. All proceeds from this event will support Mount Enon scholarships. Lunch will be served after the tournament and sponsorships are available. Go to our website at mountenon.org. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for reminding us that you have not given up on us. We thank you that when our families and our friends gave up on us, you let us know that we were still welcomed in the family of God. Lord, I want to pray for someone who might be struggling today with acceptance. Please let them know that you will receive them with open arms if they turn to you. Lord, we pray that you would let them know that they still have a seat at the table. Strengthen all of us who need strength and bless all those who need a special blessing. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. We pray that you will join us next week at the same time, same station. I'm Tyra Mariani. God bless. Next week on Faith in Focus. When your children are cussing you out, when your children are out in the streets, strung out on drugs, when you see hurricanes, when you see earthquakes, when you hear people shooting and dying and losing their lives, rather than shaking your head and getting on the phone and gossiping, there are more children of God who need to get on their knees and pray. And we need to pray not later, we need to pray not tomorrow, we need to pray not next week and not try to call the preacher. You need to get on your knees and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. Thank you for joining us on Faith in Focus. We pray that you have been blessed by today's message. If you're in the Clinton, Maryland area, come worship with us at one of our life-changing services. Sunday mornings at 7.30, 9.30, and 11.30 and our Bible study Wednesday at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. If you can't be with us, then catch our services streaming live at mountenan.org. For more information on any of our services or ministry outreaches, or if you would like to help us sponsor our broadcast, give us a call at 
238-4982. And we hope to see you again right here on Faith in Focus.